Hello students, it's me again, Teacher Adriano, and we are about to start a Unit 4 of Grade Time 5, okay? So thanks for being here with us, and this is the first of a series of videos of this unit. And as you can see here, in the title of the unit, uh, it's here, it's written here, Thinking Outside the Box, okay? You might know what, what it is already. Yeah, so what is it, thinking outside the box? Is to think creatively, to have a good imagination, and uh, as we also called lateral thinking, okay? As we're gonna see here in this video, okay? And you all read a story about Richard Turrier, you know, this, this boy, this young boy, or uh, this young boy from uh, the Maasai tribe. Remember his story? Yes, let's take a look here. Yeah, so he's a member of the Maasai tribe from Central and Eastern Africa. And he came up with a very good idea to keep lions away from the cows. Okay, do you remember what it is? What is called the lion lights. And as you could see, it was a bright idea. He was a, he's a very bright young man. And then with a, a you know, flashlight. Uh, with a moving flashlight, so he would scare the lions away. Well, now we are going to take a look at this thing here, trying to think <clears throat> lateral thinking. Let's read together. Lateral thinking means solving problems by thinking in a creative way. And that's what really happened with Richard Turrier. Yes, there, he had a problem with this in this community that the lions were attacking the, the cow, and he came up with this brilliant idea of using this flashlight, this moving flashlights, yes, so that the, the lions would think that there was a real person uh, there and they wouldn't uh, come near the cow, okay? And it means not following the obvious line of thinking. Here is an example, okay? For example, a woman is driving down a city street at 25 miles per hour. The speed limit is 30 miles per hour. She passes three cars that are traveling at 20 miles per hour. A police officer stops her and gives her a hundred fine. Why? So that's the question, yeah? So here she is <coughs> driving uh, down at 25 miles per hour, very, very fast but not at the speed limit, because the speed limit is 30 miles per hour, so she was okay. And she passes three cars that are traveling at 20 miles per hour. She was a little bit faster than those cars, okay? And even though she was within the, the speed limit, a police officer stops her and gives her a hundred dollar fine. Well, but why? So this apparently is not that obvious, okay? And that what requires us some creative thinking okay something that comes outside of the box that that's what we call lateral thinking okay so let's let's think about it and let's read this paragraph here if we think too much about the speed because you say wow she was within the speed limit because the speed limit was 30 and she was 35 uh, she was 25 but if we concentrate focus on the speed we may not get the answer, okay? So what does the situation not tell us? It doesn't tell us, for example, what time of day it is. So a possible reason for the $100 fine is that it is nighttime, for example, <clears throat> and the woman is driving without her lights on. That could be a possibility. Maybe the problem is not the, the, the speed, but the, the lights, okay? Or another possible reason for the fine for the fine is that the street is one way and the woman is driving the wrong way. So when we read a, a situation like this, we tend to focus ourselves in, in, on only one detail, and then we forget that there could be more reasons, more details to focus on to figure out uh, why she got the fine. So this is what lateral thinking is all about, okay? Let me give you other, other definitions of lateral thinking. 
So lateral thinking is also referred to as thinking outside the box. So this is the lateral thinking. So let take a look at this. If you use the vertical thinking, which is the opposite, okay, is the, the person who abides by the rules. If, for example, you have to go from point A to point B, so you have to move all the way into, the, in, into that maze, and okay, until you go out in the hardest way at point B, okay? But if you use lateral thinking, you could think of other possibilities. For example, you should ignore the rules and maybe take the easiest way to go from the point A to the point B, like a shortcut from A here to B. This is lateral thinking, okay? To come up with original and creative solutions for a problem. Let's take a look at this. So, lateral thinking is about restructuring questions or problems. Maybe that problem is too overwhelming for you, but you can restructure them and think creatively. It is concerned with challenging assumptions and generation of new ideas. Okay? So lateral thinking, look for wider solutions, not the obvious solutions. Okay? Let's take a look at this thing here. Uh, don't. Don't choose. You have to change. Don't look for what is right, but look for what is different in that problem. Don't follow a sequence make deliberate jumps as we saw before in that maze yeah so they instead of going from point a to point b following the, the sequence the obvious sequence you can think of something else don't concentrate on relevance welcome change intrusions wow and don't accept the obvious explore less likely directions okay that's what it's lateral thinking Let's move on here. So lateral thinking is seeking to solve a problem by non-conventional and apparently illogical means. Okay. What else? A process and willingness to look at things in a different way. A new type of thinking that complements analytical and critical thinking. And a creative problem-solving tool that helps create new ideas, new products, new processes, and new services. Okay? So let's take a look at this lateral thinking problem. Let's say a problem. Uh, so this is a story, a very nice story. Uh, um, but, let me see here. Uh, wait a minute. Let's see. Yes, here it is. So this is a very good uh, activity for us. Work in pairs, small groups. So let's work here, you and me. Some situations that you have to find the possible answers, okay? Take a look at the first one. A father and son are in a bad car crash. So they are in an accident. They are each taken to different hospitals. Okay, so the father goes to one specific hospital and the son goes to another hospital. The son is taken into the emergency room. The doctor there looks at the boy and says, Oh, that's my son! How is this possible? If the father went to, was involved in the same car accident, he is injured, and he goes to a hospital, a different hospital, and the boy goes to another hospital, and when the doctor who is going to help the son, he looks at the son and says, that's my son. How is this possible? Wow. So, try to use the lateral thinking reasoning here, okay? Think outside of the box. Don't, don't look at the obvious right now. I'll give you some minutes for you to, to think about it, okay? What's the solution for that problem? And... Uh, and pause the video right now and in a few minutes we're going to be back okay uh, did you have time to think about it were you creative enough well so remember the situation the father and the son got involved in an in a car accident and then one goes to one hospital and the other goes to another hospital and then when uh, 
The boy is taken to the emergency room. And the doctor looks at him and said, oh, that's my son. So, what do you think? Here's the answer. The doctor is the boy's mother. That's a good one, isn't it? Because a doctor is a neutral word in English. It could refer both to a man or to a woman. So in this case, uh, the doctor is the man's, the boy's mother. Okay? That's why she said, oh, that's my son. And she was concerned about his son. That was not his father. His father wasn't in the other hospital. Okay. Now, uh, let's take a look at the second situation and the third. Okay. Situation number two. A woman is lying awake in bed. She's there in, in bed. She dials a number on the phone, says nothing, puts the phone down, and then goes to sleep. Why? That seems strange, doesn't it? Yeah, she's there on bed. She just dials a, a number on the phone, stays, says, not, says nothing, puts the phone down, and goes to sleep. Why? Number three. A man lives on the... 12th floor of a building. Every morning he takes the elevator down to the entrance and leaves the building. In the evening he gets into the elevator when he comes back from work or whatever and if there is someone else in the elevator he goes directly to the 12th floor. If there, the elevator is empty he goes to the, to the 10th floor and walks up two flights of stairs to his apartments why? Well, I've heard this before. I'm not going to tell you the secret here. First, the second one, I don't know. I have to think. But this one, I know. Yeah, that's a good one. So when he goes down, okay. He goes all the way down from the 12th to the ground floor. But when he comes back and he wants to go all the way up to his apartment, uh, if there is someone else in the elevator, he goes directly to the 12th floor. But if he's alone, only him in the elevator. He goes to the tenth floor. He goes to the to the tenth floor and walks up two flights of stairs to his apartment. Why? I'm gonna give you some minutes to think about it. Okay. Okay. How how was it? Was it difficult to solve those mysteries? Well, let, let me give you the answers now. The first one, you know, the, the boy is the doc, the doctor is the boy's mother. And what about the second one? The woman is in a hotel, and the person in the next room is snoring loudly. She calls the number to wake them up and stop the, and to stop the snoring. Yeah, so she calls the next door apartment just to wake the person up or them up to stop the snoring. Okay, and then uh, they wake up and. And that's it, okay? So that's a good idea, right? That's why she doesn't say anything. She just calls the next room to wake the person up to stop the snoring. And the, the one about the man who takes the elevator up to the 10th floor, what's, what's wrong here? The man is not tall enough to reach the button for the 12th floor. So he's a little man. He's a little person. So he can't reach the 12th floor button so that's why he goes he can only reach the 10th floor button and then he leaves on the 10th floor and goes all the way up for two other flight of stairs okay that's a good one so this is what lateral thinking is is all about okay thinking outside the box and this is required from us sometimes okay to think in unconventional ways yeah so, other lateral thinking problems, for, ex for example, a cowboy rode into, a, into town on Friday, spent one night there, then left on Friday. How is that possible? Wow, what happened here? He rode, he was, you know, with his horse, because he's a cowboy, and to town on Friday, spent one night there, and then left on Friday. How? If, if he spent one night, he should have left on Saturday. How is that possible? And a woman had two sons, Billy and Bobby, 
who were born at the same hour of the same day of the same year, but they were not twins. How is this possible? Two sons born at the same day, same hour, the same day, the same year, but they're not twins. How is this possible? Well, I'm not going to give you these answer right now, answers right now. I'm going to give them next class, Unit 5. And I want you to, to, to think about the answers for these two things here, okay? See you in the next video.